Moesha the lawyers, New Jersey lawyer, joining me out of New York, Jason Oceans. Michael Gottlieb, defense attorney, joining me out of Miami. Um, Mike Gottlieb, I don't recall anyone saying that he shouldn't have a trial. Well, I agreed, but um, what I think my counterpart is saying is there's no evidence that the young lady was in this car. There's no DNA She's from this car. There's lady, no evidence from number one. The She's 12 a little year old girl. girl. Uh, what about correct. all the, the eyewitnesses at the park? There's young kids that said they saw the girl approach a, a blue truck. I mean, you know, we, we need to find out how accurate their information is. It needs to be substantiated. You don't have a license tag. You don't have an identification of an individual, as far as I know. If she was in his vehicle and they have his vehicle, is there evidence of her DNA being in his vehicle? I think those are important questions Absolutely. that need to be asked and answered right. before somebody right. points a finger and says he's guilty of murder. I agree. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Well, another interesting thing, Mike Gottlieb, is police, with all the power that they have, they cannot negotiate what prosecutors are going to do. So if that was said to him, prosecutors are not bound by that in any way. That's correct, but that may lead to some type of suppression issue. If the police use trickery or deceit in order to gain evidence, that, that, that evidence might be protected by the Fourth or the Fifth Amendment, Excuse and that me? evidence might be suppressed. Trickery yes. and deceit is absolutely constitutional. You can trick not, not a defendant. When it, Yes, it is. No, no, no. You cannot trick a defendant as to his constitutional rights. You can trick a defendant. You can use ploys. You can use tactics. That's right. But when you delude a defendant as to his constitutional rights and you tell him that he's not going to get the death penalty and you make a quid pro quo, a promise for something, that's in all likelihood going to lead to suppression. That's not correct. Do you believe that he led them to the body? Nancy, no, I don't think so. You know, I don't think so either. I think he gave it up. I think that he gave it up. So he is back at the playground, three-tenths of a mile from where Adriana was abducted. Lydia, the little sister, IDs the car to a T right down to a bumper sticker. My Gottlieb, that is according to the family. It's not an anecdotal story. The family has said she identified the car, she identified the man. They know him. They know him. They play with his children, Gottlieb. That might be true, but that's a lot of distance to travel. He would have had to have taken her, gotten her in the car, brought her 17 miles out of town, killed her, buried her, brought her, come back into town another 17 miles, all without anybody noticing any of his activity, any of the speeding. Again, there's no evidence in the car. I haven't heard any evidence that, that he was covered in dirt, that his clothes were disheveled, that he was sweating hot or anything like that. In fact, I think his story might be consistent with going back to the park looking for a missing child. They said he had circled around the park several times. So I do think that there's being a rush to judgment here.